show on this one. You know, I saved the best for last. Shout out to Diddy. Hopefully Diddy will pop up today. Diddy popped up on us on Wednesday. He slipped through the bars, put the baby oil on. He punched the security guard in the face, took his phone, and hit us on YouTube. Baby. Yeah. Now, the word was out that Diddy didn't have to do that no more to the security guards because Diddy got the money in there and everybody's on payroll. So the security guard said, Diddy, why you did this to me? We already had, we already talked about this. I got you. So Diddy's back, he got the phone back in the mix. So now, we are ready to roll. Hopefully Diddy will be back in here today. Shout out to Diddy. Hope Diddy gets out soon. Yeah, yeah. baby. All right, so. Diddy's lawyers claim that the prosecutors edited and manipulated the Cassie assault footage. Now, I don't know how they can say this. I don't know how they figure this. Shape baby. But we are definitely gonna see what they're talking about this afternoon. So let's jump into this right now. Let's watch this first, and then we're gonna jump into the, to the actual audio content of it. Surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video, captured on multiple cameras, shows Combs assaulting his then-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. There is no audio. According to the complaint, Combs became extremely intoxicated and punched Miss Ventura in the face, giving her a black eye, which according to the lawsuit, prompted Ventura to try and leave the hotel room. The surveillance video obtained by CNN begins as she enters the hallway. The complaint says as she exited, Mr. Combs awoke and began screaming at Miss Ventura. He followed the hallway of the hotel while yelling at her. The complaint goes on to say he grabbed her and then took glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her. In the surveillance video, Combs can be seen grabbing Ventura and throwing her to the ground. As Ventura lies on the ground, Combs then kicks her twice and attempts to drag Okay, so we need answers right now. Can that be, do y'all think that those tapes was tampered with? What y'all think? Cause that looked crazy, man. Now he, I know Boogie did that, man. Yeah. It's crazy, man. I don't know what to think, cause now the lawyers are saying this. Like, what? How can they? Man, how can they? How can it be edited? We watching them hit up. We watching it, man. We watching it, fam. Like, how you even gonna even sit there and try to lie to us like this, my dude? We watched in the tapes. Like, you know, as much as we might want Diddy to be, because this is this is what I said from the beginning. This is what threw all of this off with me. Because I said from the from the jump that that um I said from the jump that the only thing that killed me with Diddy was the whole tape with Cassie. All the allegations and everything. You know, it's fun and jokes. I laugh with y'all in here about it. But, you know, until they prove that to me, I don't believe none of that other stuff too much with the raping of the kids and all of that. They got to show me some more. But this right here, I, 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 I can't say that, you know, I can't defend him on this. He's a foul dude for this. Yeah.
You know what I mean? You just can't defend them on this one, man. Okay, so here it goes. I got it. We're gonna listen to it. We're gonna listen to what's going on right now with this right now. Claiming that the feds edited the Cassie video so the judge would deny bail. Oh my god, this guy is the worst. All right, it's about to get crazy here. Sit back, roll up, get your popcorn. We're gonna vibe for a little while. Let's talk about it. I'm about to roll up too, so I'm gonna have the picture up for a little while. For up his own actions. Kim, it's getting nuts. Thank you for helping to prepare this. So the big story in the headline is this. Yeah, he's now claiming the feds edited it. Edited how? What on earth did they edit, Kim? With like, what, Shit, how baby. brain dead is this moron? Oh, they edited the part where you walked out, did what you did and walked away? Like, it's all there unedited, Kim. It's it's insane. I feel like today's word of the day is gaslighting and we're going to get into all of it as, as we go through everything. But yes, this has been the major takeaway. It appears that Diddy's defense is claiming that there is another version of this video that shows the sequence of events in a different manner. And that this isn't proof of an ST operation. It is a glimpse into a 10 year long consensual relationship. There, I mean, that's not, I don't know about you, Kim. That's not how I love people. <laughs> it's like literally the opposite of love is to do what he did in this video to Cassie. There's nothing love about it. Now I sense, and yeah. I've always sensed it that when his mom wrote the letter and every time they're trying to justify Kim, there's always like a, well, she did it too type of thing that sort of tries to play it. Like, well, she was aggressive too. And it's like, I don't know if that's true, but if she was, I'm guessing it was a lot of defense to deal with Diddy's aggression. And that's not how it works because you're defending yourself or dealing with a guy who's doing that to you doesn't mean that it's warranted ever. Let, let's make that crystal clear. It's never warranted, even if she was doing that to him, which I would not condone at all. Men can be victims as well. It is our job as men, men, to not ever resort to that. That's just a non a no-go. No go because one, it's wrong. No go because two, you're going to get arrested. We're bigger, stronger more often. And that's just how it's treated right or wrong. You got to be the better person and not resort to that to protect yourself and to protect them. So I don't understand what on earth he thinks there's any version or edit of this video that can justify what he's trying to say. So we're going to break it down. So, so I'd also like to just point out before we get into any of this defense from Diddy's team, there was an apology video, <laughs> right? Is that what you call it? Right. He did say that, you know, his actions in the video were, were inexcusable and it was the darkest time in his life. And he admitted that it was real. I'm just, just so, I'm so surprised he didn't say in that video, bitch deserved it. Like, cause that was the I, attitude oh. I had it. That was the attitude I, I feel with yeah. her. him and his mom. I just feel like he's like, damn, sh she's a B. She she asked for it. That That's the kind of vibe I get from him. But anyway, I digress. So they went to the judge and said, "There's we need a longer thing. Mm -hmm. And the judge is like, okay, well, you got to still do it in a timely fashion, which I guess then they did. This is what this is. This then then came in. And here's the new uh, thing. We're going to break it down. This is the longer show. So let's get a little bit better. So government persuaded Judge Carter to detain Mr. Combs by claiming its video of an eight-year-old incident. It was so long ago, it doesn't, it's not relevant anymore. An eight-year-old incident into evidence was of X trafficking and by making unstantured, unstantured claims of witness tampering. The defense rebutted those arguments, though its own proffer, but lacked across access to key evidence that could corroborate it. Nearly two months later, much has changed. Most importantly, discovery produced after the initial bail hearing, some of it after this motion was filed, shows the narrative the government presented then was fictional. For instance, we know now that even before it arrested Mr. Combs, the government possessed blank, confirming his account of May, March 5th uh, at the Intercontinental Hotel. But instead of presenting that video to the court, the government submitted an altered video that omitted key scenes and presented events materially out of order. Prosecutors also claim there was a second victim, but they have never interviewed her and messages produced in discovery confirm she was not a victim. Likewise, communication produced in discovery show Mr. Combs contacts with witnesses 
were in, uh, innocuous and consistent with his right to participate in his defense by developing a potential defense, uh, developing defense witnesses. Now, we're going to keep going, but let's just pause there for you and go look at this because... Facts, Charles! Zagraba break! That video, the one we all know, to the court and submitted an altered version that admitted key scenes and presented offense materially out of order. I'm sorry. There's no order that justifies what we saw. None. I, 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 I'm just in utter disbelief that this man and his team think this is the approach to win. The same guy who literally was like, oh, judge, uh, we use this legal pad. It says legal on it for all our notes. And now the judge is learning. Uh, the photos show up a legal pad that doesn't say legal on it. Oh, yeah, but judge, it's still a legal pad. Isn't it called a legal pad? So it's all legal. But you literally told us that you used a pad that said legal on it. They they are getting caught left and right. And it's it's no no surprise to me now. Look, I people have been mad at me, Kim, that I've tried to give Diddy some benefit of the doubt of like, he deserves due process. Because he does. I don't want the case to get thrown out because we didn't give him due process. Not because I believe he's innocent, but he has a right to defend himself just as anybody would. But every chance he gets to potentially, it seems like, oh, well, maybe there's something here where the government screwed up. It slaps back in the face of like, no, no, they're just they're just screwing with us. They're trying to find any little exit they can to get this thing thrown out rather than face accountability and enough already. So I, I'm going to get less and less <laughs> uh, fair to Diddy because I feel like Kim, I don't know what you think. He's lost that right in this opinion. He's wasting the judge's time, our time. He's doing things that are absolutely proving he cannot be trusted and is not safe. On November 13th, the government produced even more material. New evidence, including more blank, of the March 15th, uh, March 5th, 2016 Intercontinental Hotel incident. The government had this blank as early as August 7th, yet only produced to defense after Mr. Combs filed his renewed motion for bail. Uh, the blank consists of blank, 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 used to create the government's principal piece of evidence at the earliest earlier bail hearings, an edited, manipulated version of the video published by CNN. The new blank supports the defense's argument at the, at the earlier hearings that show the government knowingly mischaracterized and concealed critical facts during those hearings. As an analysis prepared by forensic video analysis, Connor McCourt explains, the video the government submitted to the court omits footage corroborating the defense account, changes the sequence of events in material respects, and does not accurately depict the events. I'm sorry, it does yeah. not accurately yeah. depict... He's doing it! This isn't uh, AI. <laughs> but what happened before apparently changes everything. And this is where I just get so frustrated because it doesn't. Uh, it, it's it's honestly them saying what you think you saw, you didn't see. And that's what I mean. It's ridiculous. Very ridiculous. It's nasty. I don't get it. Yeah. Multiple times. We saw him angry. We saw him. Chris Smith was good, my boy. Get away. That's what I Indeed. saw. I don't know what you saw, but that's what I saw. Well, apparently, Kim, the government had a more complete beep during the initial hearing, but chose not to share it with the court. Instead, it offered the edited version of the CNN video as its most powerful evidence of danger and obstruction. Now, I'm confused. An edited version of CNN video. So I guess the, the CNN video isn't unedited? Is unedited? And this is an edited version of the CNN video. So what we saw in CNN, the video that we've all seen, is the real version. So he's trying to claim, I guess there's a, maybe there is an edited version that did AI. I haven't seen this said video, Kim, but maybe. All I know or is- Or there's another version of it that we haven't seen. Yeah, right? all I know is the version we've seen on CNN is plenty evidence enough to know you're a monster and you did it. There's there's no ifs, ands about it. There's no justification. And there's it was no bad enough. Oh, there's a full yeah. story. There's no story that justifies beating someone ever. And it was bad anyone. enough for him to do a public apology as well. So I don't understand this backtracking. Correct. I don't get this. Correct. I'm telling you, DraftKings is the best place to bet. All right, so it's looking disgusting for Diddy out there. Hold on, we gotta go back to it. Exhibit A was not evidence of a freak off, but de depicted a domestic dispute in which he ran down the hall of the hotel to recover his clothes and cell phone. Government invented a different narrative. Oh, so this is the justification. He was getting his clothes and his cell phone, Kim. There you go. 
That's why he was dragging her back and doing all the things he did. That's why. That's why. We just didn't know he didn't have his phone. Can you imagine this meeting with his lawyers? <laughs> Diddy, you're in a towel. Why are you running down the hallway in a towel? Uh, uh, she took my clothes. She ran with my clothes. Did he grab his clothes when he went back? Like, did she have his clothes? I guess she was wearing his clothes because she was probably naked in the room too. So then she leaves to try to like get out and get clothed and leave. And then he's like, yo, give me my clothes. How dare you leave with my clothes? That should, that, that, uh, there's the excuse, right, Kim? That warrants this. Oh my God. That's totally the, we why have a different he, narrative. Like, grabbed argued, her and threw her to the ground. That's why. Yeah, our, argu our evidence know. will show that this, that's not just what happened because it's about, if it's about the clothes and wanting to get the clothes back, which again, it's not, why drag the victim back down the hall of the room? Thank you. And you can see that on tape. That's what he does. The gov yeah, exactly. How are you going to justify that? The government's straight on this. Government further argued Mr. Combs throws a vase at her, which the district court cited detaining blah, blah, blah. The government apparently stands by these arguments again, but they are false and the government knows it. We saw it on the video. I, I told you the word of the day is gaslighting. It's it's insane. There seems to be this argument of whether or not he threw the vase or whether he threw the flowers. Because oh my something God. falls to the ground in front of him and then he throws something else. And it's hard to be able to see because of how pixelated the surveillance footage is. That is sickening. So again, he's doing this again to save face in the public. Oh, they, they, I'm, I'm, I'm innocent. They changed my, my video. I didn't really do that. But notice he's not denying the drag here by the hallway. He's arguing, I went to get my clothes and I threw flowers, not a vase. And the government knows it. The more complete footage of the incident in contrast, the government's sens sensationalized CNN cut contradicts the government's representations. The video demonstrates that Mr. Combs, in fact, ran down the hall to retrieve a bag of clothes and a cell phone. He did not drag victim back down the hall of the room. Do we need to watch it again? Because I know you did. As the government and its resequenced exhibit falsely suggests, he did not throw a vase at victim on, but only its contents. There it is. Presumably flowers. <laughs> And he was not only able to leave once, security staff intervened. In other words, it is the government whose explanation is just another cover-up. Just more lies. The true facts corroborate what Mr. Combs has stated along. The video is not evidence of a coerced freak-off and trafficking, but rather a sad glimpse into the decade-long consensual relationship, relationship between Mr. Combs and victim one. Yikes. We went through a lot more. You're not going to miss the replay. So if you're a not yet a member, become a member. Hit that join button. Or if you just want to hit the subscribe button, hit a button. Be a member. So it's this simple. That dude is pretty much saying like I'm saying. It's hard to say Diddy is innocent off that. Like it's just too much cap. Like how you like we watching the video, fam. We watching it. My fuck of ashes everywhere. We watching it. Yeah. Here's some more smoke. What Diddy did now. Diddy's lawyers are still fighting over what we talked about previously. If you did not watch yesterday's podcast, I'm going to try to give you a summary of yesterday's podcast the best that I can. So if you did watch yesterday's podcast, you are ahead of the curve. Diddy made another motion for bail. So Diddy's attorneys are gonna continue to try it. Diddy's like, let me out of custody. The prosecution is like, Ugh, please. First, the prosecution argued, you have shown nothing new to reopen this question. Like you don't get to reopen the question of bail. We saw this argument in the Corey Richens case. In the bail arguments, you saw Corey Richens attorneys saying, this is a change of circumstance, so we can reopen the question of bail. In that case, it was the changing of the potential penalty. And the judge said, yes, I think that's enough to change the circumstances to look at the bail. You can't just ask for the bail to change. You can't just come in and be like, excuse me, you said no, you guys, you can't just do it like your kid. Hey, I know you told me no, but I figured if I asked again 9,822 times that you would eventually say yes. The court is not having it. 
You can't just ask again because, well, you said no before, but maybe you'll change your mind now. There has to be a reason. The prosecution is saying that there's not a reason to reopen this question now. The defense is saying, yes, there is. There is a reason to reopen it now. There's a reason to reopen it now because we learned new things and we learned new things from the discovery from the prosecutors and the prosecutors are like, please, please, that's not the truth. So Diddy and the prosecutors are fighting over bail. In part of the prosecution's answer, they spill all of the tea about Diddy's notebook. No, it is not the new Lawnard notebook. He could never. Custody would also be like, those stickers look like contraband. We're not doing it. And I'd be like, but they're just stickers. They're not crest white strips. That's a deep callback to the Corey Richens case. But Diddy apparently had a notebook <laughs> The name of the notebook was redacted out of everywhere except for the footnote. So we now know it's the to-do notebook. And um, we heard about that in the court hearing as well. The prosecution brought in information from Diddy's to-do notebook. The way they got that information is that there had been a sweep of the MDC by law enforcement related to something else. Diddy's lawyers are like, this was a pretext. You made up a fake reason to search his jail cell. And they're like, no, we didn't. There is, There are complaints about MDC. I speculated that they're dealing with contraband issues because they searched multiple housing units in the jail, but they also searched some offsite providers connected with the jail. So it seemed like they had a operation set. Whether it's pretext or not is kind of you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, because they don't need a reason because you're in jail. And Diddy had already been using other people's phone codes. You guys heard about Alec Murdaugh doing this, had been using other people's phone codes to make phone calls to people not on his approved list, thinking that it wouldn't be tracked. We are living in a digital age where those things aren't hard to track. I'm not going to talk more about it. We don't need to help people crime better. But just for anybody, if you do not think that the government can find you making a call when you are calling from a jail facility. That's hilarious. <laughs> if you use another inmate's phone code number, you're not even really slowing down the process. You're just getting yourself in further trouble because it looks like you're up to fuckery. But custody's going to find you on your phone, not to mention they had tapped Diddy's phones well before any of this. So Diddy was using three-way calling. Also, you can't do, you can't call up a known number or a number on your approved list and then be like, yo, I need you to call so-and-so and then have that person initiate the call to the other person. You think they're not going to track that too? Boo. Come now. If anything, you slow them down minimally. So Diddy had been using other inmates phone numbers. He'd been using three-way calling. He had been using a service that is disallowed in custody to have communications. The prosecution said he's trying to mask his communication so they don't find it. And it seemed that he was also offering or asking people on the other end of the phone. I'm sure they have somebody just assigned to listening to Diddy's phone calls, but they had listened to the fact that Diddy was offering payment to people's books and was- That's crazy. I knew Diddy was in there spending that bag. In custody code. Diddy was already um, breaking the rules of MDC. So did they need a reason to check his cell? No. The defense is arguing it's a pretext. However, a bunch of the stuff in his cell was photographed. This is what the prosecution said in their motion regarding bail. And in the bail motion, they argued that Diddy had offered to pay someone to make an Instagram post that refuted statements in one of the civil lawsuits. Some of you who have been following the case closely know what Instagram post we are talking about, but had made an Instagram post that was like, that wasn't my experience to dispute what was coming up in one of the more recent civil lawsuits and offering payment there. So the prosecution was saying, if Diddy is allowed out, we are even more concerned about witness tampering, witness intimidation, intimidating victims, all. So then the defense came forward and said, excuse me, the things that you have taken, photographed, all the rest of it is attorney-client privilege, and how dare you? So then the judge said, y'all get into court tomorrow. 
come to court immediately, all, all of you, all of you come into court immediately. So that's where we are. We are now talking about the get into court immediately regarding things in Diddy's jail cell that may or may not have been attorney client privilege. Now, you guys know how this goes. Where else did we see this? Shout out to Sammy Rogers. He's talking them facts. Another case did. Shout out to Charles too. The attorneys arguing that things taken from a defendant's jail cell were attorney client privilege information. Corey Richens. Mm-hmm, exactly. How well did that go? What did the court rule in that case? The court was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, nope, those are not privileged. Some of the things weren't even seen by the prosecution that weren't privileged. The prosecution here said, look, the things we were concerned about went to a filter team. The way I'm so mad they don't call it a taint team in the federal courts. Hey, it went to the filter team. And the filter team was deciding what was attorney-client privilege. And that's where we are stepping into the rest of this because the 19th and the 20th, a whole bunch more shit was filed. Because of course it was. It's crazy, yo. It's getting nasty every day. I don't think they're going to let Diddy out, B. Because like she said, they scared that Diddy going to start threatening people, you know, so they start coming forward so it could ruin everything that they trying to do put this man away. It's crazy. Of course it was. In his November 19th letter to the court filed prior to the hearing that same day, the defendant stated that a government investigator took photographs of several items, including intact pages from two different legal pads and ripped out pages from other legal pads. I think they meant that the photos were taken of pages that were ripped out, not that the investigator ripped out the photos, given the full context. The letter also described the legal pads in detail and argued that they were privileged in part because on top of the legal pads and notes, defendant has a folder marked legal, which put anyone on notice that anything along with the folder marked legal is attorney client material. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know if that puts people on notice in the jail. You'd be shocked at what people do to avoid detection in the jail. At the November 19th hearing, defense counsel presented the court with an intact legal pad with legal written on the binding, stating that the legal label on this and other pads showed that they were clearly protected by attorney client privilege and should not be in the government's possession. The court notes that the sealed exhibit to government's brief includes photographs of two intact legal pads, both taken at the time of the BOP sweep. There is no writing on the binding of either pad. Oh shit, we're gonna back up. In his November 19th letter to the court, I'm rereading this whole thing again as my brain buffers. Defendant stated that a government investigator took photographs of several items, including intact pages from two different legal pads and ripped out pages from other legal pads. We just read that. The letter also described the legal pads in detail and argued that they were privileged in part because on top of the legal pads and notes, defendant had a folder marked legal. Jada Barr said dude dropped the soap nasty. Prosecution's motion said the folder marked legal or the envelope marked legal was padded down to see if there was anything like more three-dimensional in it that needed to be searched, but didn't open it. The defense said that that folder was put on top of the legal pads and like anything below it should have been, somebody should have been on notice. They said it put anyone on notice that everything along with the folder marked legal is attorney client material. At the November 19th hearing. Okay, Patricia, I'm glad you said that. Okay, now, I agree with you, Patricia. I wouldn't be surprised if they edited it also. They were trying to do nasty work to Diddy. But how do we explain? Like, for real, this is real, though. Like, what could you explain, like, the punching in the head, the yanking her by a ponytail, the dragging her up and down the thing, throwing the vibes at her? That's kind of assault. It's kind of nasty work. I don't know if they can explain that one. That's the only thing. Yeah! You know, right now what Diddy's fighting is this. He's saying that the tape was tampered with. Look. That's what Diddy's fighting right now. So I just don't know how he figured he gonna say that this is tampered with when I clearly punched her in the face, dragged it down the hallway through the vase at her. It's kind of, yeah, it's, it's nasty for Diddy. You know what I'm saying? It's really nasty for him, man. It's going to take a lot for his lawyers to beat that. Because right now, that's just trying to beat the, uh, to get bail. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean he's going to beat the case. 
That's just to get bail. What's killing Diddy right now? Happy freaking Fridays. That's a fact, Tyson. Shea baby. Yeah. What's killing Diddy right now is that they know that, you know, with the Tupac stuff, all of this stuff, and uh, Suge Knight, and, you know, they, 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 I think they're terrified. They think that uh, Diddy's a thug. That's what I think they think. And then you got his sons running up on Ray J. You know, that's not good. Remember what they said. That's making it hot. I mean, look at this. This was crazy right here. Let me see if I could grab it. I think I got it. But I had some, some, uh, nah, it's in the other folder. Nah, we were talking about Lord Jamal. He was talking about Quincy. He was saying that he's sick and tired of these guys running around saying that Diddy is their father. Look, it's nasty. It's just these guys, they won't let Diddy live, man. You know what I'm saying? Here it go. He goes off on, 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 on Diddy's stepson, Quincy. I can't lie, my dudes. He went crazy on this dude. They start going back, talking about all of the smoke from back in the days with um, Al B. Shaw. And Puff Daddy. Crazy. Hey, look, I'll let y'all hear it. Come on, man. I give y'all the smoke, the sauce. This ain't me making things up. I'm letting y'all hear it just as much as I'm hearing it. Ops, yo, that shit is just. Yo, but just for being strong. Thank y'all for being strong and thank y'all for being by my mm -hmm. side and supporting me. I love y'all. I got the best family in the world. My birthday, I'm happy. Thanks to y'all giving me this call. Thank you very much. I love y'all. We love you, Lord. Can't so wait to see, see you in a couple of days. I'll see you in a couple of days. Say it again. What say it again. I, I know, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I know you too, baby. I know, uh, Tyson. They became goons soon as Diddy went in. They started running up on Ray J and all that. It's nasty. This dude Quincy has a father, man. And his name is Albie Shaw, man. I don't like the way... This dude be like, yo, pops, and all this type. That's not your father. It's not your father. Yeah, it's a lot of people that feel like he doing too much, man. You see how he took a shot at his dad on IG? Check your text. Who posted it? Okay, hang on. Quincy on Instagram. Here's a rare photo of me with my mom and dad. I miss you every day. Where's the dad? Oh, sh So he's trying to act like dad was always missing. That's what he's trying to say. Somebody said, well, somebody said, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Damn, he went crazy on that one. Oh, sh He said shading him, but backing the baby oil bandit is wild. Rest in peace, Kim. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't understand the dynamic that might have happened with. You know what I mean? The father and your mother. Like, first of all, the fact that I know for a fact that I'll be sure and, 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 and Puff and all that, they came up together. So for this nigga to end up with his man's girl, Diabolical work. Diabolical work. Okay. He said diabolical work. Disrespectful, super against all the OG codes that you was taught when you was young. You don't fuck with your man's girl and all this type of shit. Let alone fucking have babies with her and all this type of shit. Like, and now you got her, you know what I mean? This man's son calling you pops. Yo, that shit is just. I feel like this nigga Puff really hated this nigga, I'll be sure, for some some reason. 
in it. Tyson Garcia, you know that smoke. I see you out there. Is maybe he was in love with the Nick and the Nick didn't reciprocate his love. That's just a guess. I don't know. I'm just guessing out loud, people. But I feel like he loved the Nick, didn't get his love reciprocated, and then had it out for him like, I'm going to get this Nick back. You broke my heart. You know what I mean? I'm going to take his girl. I'm going to fucking take his son. All of this type of shit. Yeah, that's nasty. Because you don't break the heart of, of Puffy. He was Puffy when he got his heart broke. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm just guessing. But I, that's some real foul shit. That's some real foul shit. But as a man, Quincy, he don't see that, bro? You don't think it's nothing wrong with... Did he take I think he's been mom? brainwashed from a very young age. He's been brainwashed and rich dad, poor dad, right? Anybody ever re read that book? Rich dad, poor dad. P Puffy is the rich dad. You know what I mean? Um, you know, comparatively now to, you know, I'm not saying that I'll be sure is poor, but compared to uh, Puffy, he would see walk. It makes a lot of sense. What's good, my boy. So I also feel like they've groomed this this Quincy dude maybe to, you know, be an opportunist. Go where the money's at. Stay over there on that side. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I could support my real dad and live a much less uh, lavish lifestyle much more frugal lifestyle or I could stay over here with my rich dad and he can get me into TV shows and you know what I mean? Uh, I could live this lavish lifestyle and have money and jewelry and, you know, freak offs and all kind of shit, you know? Um, so, you know, it's almost like you offer a kid, especially a kid, it's like, all right, we got broccoli and carrots over here. We got candy and bubble gum and shit over here. What do you want? Al is the, is the, is the broccoli and carrots. <laughs> and Puff is the fucking candy. You know what I mean? And I think that's how it's been presented to him for a long time. I think Nick's have been in Quincy's ear, Puff included, and had the, had the mother in his ear too to, to, to talk down on, on the pops and, yo, where was your pops? When, when you needed this, where was he then? I was there. I'm the one that wiped your tears. I, you know what I mean? All of this type of shit. I bet you he's doing all kind of psychological attacks on, on a young man like that to where he feels like He's doing the right thing probably right now. Okay, Patricia, I'm glad you're in the building still. That's my whole defense too. Who knows if this man wasn't bullied into not coming around. You know, I, I ain't gonna let no nigga bully me to not come around my kid. Like, we gonna, psh, you guys shoot the five, you gotta kill me something. Like, I'm not, just, just not gonna do that. So I don't like that excuse on I'll be sure's end, but you know, you don't know. That man definitely was brainwashed and was definitely, like, told different things, you know, as far as him being the father and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy when you think about it. It's ridiculous, man. You know? We're going we gonna to see where this goes, though, because, you know, Puff ain't going to just... They not letting him out, man. They just not going to just let him out. You know, the lawyers claim and the prosecutors edited and manipulated Cassie in the soul footage. That's crazy. How can you, I, I'm saying, Puff, you got to, you know, this one ain't good, man. This one right here, it ain't, it ain't enough. You know, you thought that you, this right here would be enough to get you out of the smoke, get you on bail, get you back out in these streets. This is not enough, Puff. I'm telling you this. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know how they edited the tapes. You know what I mean? When it's showing him doing these nasty things to her. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. Those tapes can't, can't be edited. You know what I'm saying? 
Diddy, I wish you was in here today so you can explain yourself, but you know, the tapes being edited is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. If the footage was edited, why apologize? I know. It's a lot, man. That's what they were saying too to other people. That's why I be playing those other people's stuff so you know, get other people's point of view instead of a nigga just in here on YouTube always listening to his point of view. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that my word is not nothing. I'm just saying that other people's opinions count too. You know, who am I? You know, you got these other guys on YouTube. They want you to listen to them. And like they, you know.